morning everyone, Lau here. Welcome back to a new video. Um, today I'm starting another installment of my uh, cosplay bike tour. Um, as I have still time, like um, on weekdays, uh, I wanted to do at least one other um, bike tour where I go around with the cosplay and um, take you with me. Um, make a small picnic and then shoot some some sh some pictures some cosplay pictures i was really not sure which cosplay to use because most of my cosplays aren't like suited for the nature like star wars costumes in my opinion i mean they can work but it's kind of not that exciting to always have like a tree in the back of ahsoka or or i don't know pat me in a field it's like doesn't really work that well so I went back to a lot of my old costumes, had a look, and really the only thing that I could think of is Delit from Record of Lotus War. And last video, last um, last of these uh, bike tour videos when I wore my Hobbit cosplay, last time I uh, also said that I can't wear this Delit costume because I can't put it on myself, which is correct, but. I also do not exactly need to wear um, the armor parts because she's often depicted without the armor because she's not always wearing the armor and so you can at least see what I like uh, like the top part of the costume which is underneath which I think I never had any photos of so I will take that with me so it's an elf it's a record of Lotus War it's kind of high fantasy anime and like all fandom around it from more like the early 90s into like in general more the 90s and um, one of my first manga and anime that I read but anyways I might talk to you about this more at the bike tour so let's just I'm already having on like I put on my makeup already let's put on the costume and then let's go so I'm all elfed up so to say I just have to figure out what I do with that long hair. Um, but yeah, normally here is a whole like armor plate with huge shoulders and long like uh, flowy um, kind of cape beneath or in between. And um, that's just like it works with Velcro and I can't put it on myself, like on my back and everything. So. But I have packed it still. I it is in here. I just start blue and um, and gold. So maybe I use it as a prop for some photos. I take that with me, although it is kind of huge. Um, yep. I have packed everything that I want to eat. There's my thought and my camera stand and my pocket. That's or my like um, funny pack where I always put my camera. Okay, then follow me around and. Uh, See you in the nature. So yeah, the tour that I actually like I uh, want to do today is not as long as the one uh, I did with my Hobbit Girl cosplay. It is a little shorter one and it is um, going to be some of the same areas as the last time but kind of in reverse so starting from where I ended kind of. This small river here is again the Alpe and um, I'm following along this way. Don't know if here are already some nice spots and then I'm going to get to an open field and it's a little bit a different route but it won't look too different. <laughs>
just deciding if here's already a place where I can take some photos. <laughs> can you see that guy over there? It's not a guy, it's just a, I don't know, it's, it's a mannequin, it's a puppet and also a artificial duck or goose, it's like... I have no clue who put them there, but it's kind of disturbing. Yeah, it's always there. I already know that. I really like these trees, but let's see. I just decided to not do any photos here, but here's a bench. Uh, I'm just sitting down um, because I realized here, although it seems to be so like quiet and nobody's here but there are other people like what I had the idea to do a bike tour around here that's why many people come here with bikes so I won't take photos here I just wanted to address that like I'm wearing trousers right now underneath this dress because it is so damn short it is so short um, I'm wearing my Ellie Setter trousers and I think they kind of match um, and this costume is kind of old, not really like old, old, but I sometimes have the feeling it's not up to my standards anymore, but then again it's from 2016, it's the same year I did my first Ahsoka cosplay, which I'm still wearing, so can't be that bad, but probably Nowadays I wouldn't choose this uh, super shiny um, foil here, but anyways, you will see the whole costume once uh, we get to areas where I hope without um, like without other people. I mean, for sure we will always meet people, but yeah. Oh, by the way, it is so tricky to get both ears the same direction. Ah, this one is more like floppy must be like this okay and my super long hair I put in some uh, ties like here and I have a brush with me so I hope that's gonna work I went away from the road. I mean, it wasn't a road anyways, but um, I'm more like now at the edge of the forest here. And around there are still all the people. But I think here is a nice place to have my short picnic because it is now kind of lunchtime. And it's sunny here and there's a nice meadow. So why not have a picnic here? So I'm sitting down, it is sunny, by the way today it is actually the perfect weather for this because it's just around 20-21 degrees well, Celsius, I don't know in what temperatures you're measuring but uh, for us it's degrees here in Germany so that's kind of warm enough to be sitting in the sun and relaxing without being sweaty in costume you know and um, yeah let's Let's uh, start again with my <laughs> uh, ginger water, or ginger tea, which I'm still obsessed with since the last time. Oh, butterflies. I maybe start explaining what Record of Lotus War actually is. <laughs> um, because, as you know, I'm actually not that into manga anime anymore. Um, 
but I was. So, a uh, record of Lotus War, just generally spoken, is a high fantasy franchise, let's call it like this, um, from Japan. It, um, for me, the most significant uh, things are the manga and the animes, um, but it's actually even more. Um, I just found out about this some years ago, which I never knew. It was actually a campaign for um, the Dungeons and Dragons RPG, like the very well-known one, which was also huge in, um, huge in Japan um, that time, like in the 80s. And yeah, they used to do like campaign books with these characters, with Lodos. Lodos is an island separated from the main continent because of the war of different goddesses, and there are elves and dwarves and men and um, other creatures, dragons, all that stuff. So it was it used to be a Dungeon, Dungeons and Dragons campaign. Then they started to release books. The author is uh, Ryo Mizuno, and. Um, yeah, it started to get really popular um, with a kind of, yeah, 1990, there was an anime made and uh, it was an OVA, so an original video adaptation was not a TV anime series, but it is so good. It is uh, really like, if you think, well, 1990, what, what, what crap kind of uh, quality can that be? But it's really good. It still holds up today, what I think although I'm not into anime anymore or any longer. And yeah, from that on, then there were different manga series, different also anime series for like TV anime series, not only the OVA, there are two different ones and very, and also movies, which are a little bit strange because some of them do not really have to do with the core story and they are like branched out different um, characters and the main thing I know is or are the different animes and the different manga. Uh, the Grey Witch, the Chronicles of Flame, the Deal It um, Shoujo uh, manga and uh, Lady of Forest. And yeah, it started actually for me. Let's start eating. I have brought my favorite food in the world, which is melon. Like, do you also love melon as much as I do? Like watermelon? I love all kinds of melon, <laughs> but watermelon is my favorite. So yeah. How got I into it? Well, actually when I think about it, the first step into like the more of Japanese culture thing, manga, anime, was probably Pokemon and Digimon back then, in like starting in 1999, maybe in 2000. And I don't know. But when the Lord of the Rings, and now we're back to Lord of the Rings. You know, remember last time I was sitting in a Hobbit girl cosplay and was talking why I'm a fan or why I was a fan or whatever of Lord of the Rings. The record of Lord of the Rings also kind of has to do with it because. You know, it's fantasy with elves and all that stuff. Um, when I got into Lord of the Rings, when the movies were released, so 2001, 2 and 3, I wasn't into manga anime or Digimon, Pokemon. I didn't know about anime or manga terms back then. I completely cut that off. It was just in my like Tolkien universe, elves and poetry and everything talking and also other fantasy stuff was really my thing at least I thought <laughs> I, I didn't read much much else and and a friend from school Tina she was already well known as being the fan of Japanese manga Japanese comics she was really good at drawing already back then when we were like 13 years old or something and um, she introduced me to Record of Lotus War. She brought me the mangas. So the very first ones, the very first manga I ever read were Record of Lotus War, The Grey Witch. And it kind of brought two things together that I loved. And 
brought together this whole fantasy universe kind of like a lot of rings not in such a big scale a little bit smaller and with a little bit more like colorful things the elves look different you know it's more that typical high fantasy and um, combined with comic you know with these um, Japanese style anime which I kind of previously liked with Pokemon and Digimon so that brought it together and I became a huge fan so these were also the very first manga that I bought for myself because after I read them she borrowed them to me um, and I read them and then I also bought them so these were the D-Lit Delit is one of the main characters, obviously she also has her own very small series um, of like short stories. Um, these were the very first manga I um, bought myself. Let's eat again my loved kind of uh, tomato and glass and which, which is not a sandwich because it doesn't have a cover. But I think it was even, yeah, it must have been German subtitles because I wasn't that good in um, English back then. But they used to do like complete anime nights, like with um, the whole night, uh, one anime from like the whole season or, or the whole anime, like episode one to the last one. And they did that with Record of Lotus War Chronicles of Flame, or it's not really Chronicles of Flame, but it's more the story of what the, the manga Chronicles of Flame is, it is the TV anime series. And then I watched that, I, I mean I didn't watch it completely the whole night, but I recorded it on, on VHS. Mm. Yeah, these were kind of the first impressions of anime, manga watching anime and all that stuff. For me, Record of Lotus War. I still love it. These are one of the only manga series I will ever keep. I will never sell, especially because they are now signed by uh, Ryu Mizuno. Yes, I met the author of all the Record of Lotus War series and um, books and everything at a German convention. It was actually the one in Berlin, the MMC. Very small convention, but he was there as a guest and he was he held a panel, which was really interesting. Mm. And he also signed and I took four of my manga with me and in all of them I have no signatures from the author from the author himself. Uh, I will insert that now.
I would never part with these manga and from time to time I revisit them. The anime, some years ago I tried to watch again, story-wise, and I, I just don't like following anime anymore, kind of, maybe it, it changes again, but I still think the OVA holds up, like, um, from the look, it's all beautiful. <laughs> By the way, the blanket I'm sitting on is actually the cape of the cosplay. That's why I took it with me. I thought, okay, I might just uh, take the, the armor with me as like props and the cape. Well, do I need it also as a prop or just as something to sit on, you know? <laughs> as I said, the costume is not the best anymore. It was my very first armor anything that I did. First time I would warbler. Like these are like the shoulder pads. They they come like here. Like whoa. And yes, it, as it is warbler sitting here in the sun, it gets a little bit. Um, let's say I should take it out of the sun uh, during the next time. <laughs> ready to leave this place. I think I've not spent quite enough time here and I'm ready to go to the next location. But first <laughs> I have to figure out um, where like exactly to go because uh, there is no path. Either I go back that way or I just push my bike that way. I definitely have to push here because there's not the ground to uh, really go by a bike. I think I just go back that way where I came and then all the way there. Oh wait, but I could also just go... Okay, easier to go that way, I guess. <laughs> See ya!
such a lovely place. I also could have had my lunch here, but I thought it's uh, nicer to sit down with a blanket. That's why I didn't come here. And also sometimes it's occupied with other people, so. want to take some photos here yeah no not here but here because with these maybe like sitting in these flowers and you see the other people walking there that's at the other part of the small river so <laughs> the other part of the app uh, last uh, bike tour I came from there like that direction there is like this whole other space where I was last time then I came out here and then went that way so now I came from here and I'm going that way so that's the difference and that's what I mean with like uh, the reverse route to take some photos there which might look cute but I also have some ponies with me and and some LPS because I couldn't decide so maybe I take some like toy photography photos there um, but of course it's a kind of a popular place here <laughs> so you never are so you're kind of never alone here so but let's take out my toys more or less um, flower themed but I have a couple of um, LPS that are water themed but of course I don't want them to fall in there so that's the easiest thing for shooting. I remember um, 
back in the old days of uh, animex.de, like uh, a German uh, cosplay website. Uh, there were some very kind of famous cosplay shootings done with horses, like one Eowyn on a horse and also an um, Ash Ketchum on a horse made up as Galoppa. Oh, that was, that was, that was cool. I always wanted to do like a cosplay shooting. with horses but that will probably never happen because I don't have a horse and I don't know anyone who has one so <laughs> I can just admire them from far to go. this might be a nice spot for another picnic because I still have something to eat and to drink but it's in the again sun like directly maybe I go like more over there was the first manga I read, the first manga I bought, the first anime I like watched in Japanese. It was like it had hit all the, the important things. And then when I um, like heard about cosplay and some cosplayers were sometimes in those like anime uh, magazines, I was like, oh, I wish I could cosplay. I wish I could sew. I wish I could know how to do like armor and everything. I mean, this was back in. 2005 or so, <laughs> four, I don't remember exactly when, but um, this um, wasn't the time when I was able to do it. I didn't even know where I would be able to wear it, I didn't know that conventions were a thing, I didn't know anything, but I wish uh, that I could do a delete costume, like that was, that was the thing that really uh, came to mind first. So Jan actually just years later like 10 years later like when I was like around 10 years into cosplay then I finally like thought okay now I kind of know how to do uh, armor parts and I went for it and I have worn Dilit twice 
Okay, let's get out some something to eat, something to drink. So I've worn her twice at a celebrate exhibition. I've worn her like twice at a convention. It gets more and more spicy. <laughs> I wish I had more water to put in there, but. Okay, I guess the family is away. That was kind of annoying. It was like at least 15 minutes. They were absolutely around me and they were not like going. Taking photos here, taking photos there. Look, there's a horse. As if they would do that like um, exactly so that I, I am annoyed. Sorry, but yeah, I think they're on our way. Um, because A, I don't want to have them like in my background and I should not have them in my background because I can't have them in my videos. <laughs> and B, like they were talking loud, so. But this is like the nature or wherever, not so nature because right behind there is a house, but anyways, and it's not my place, so can't complain or anything. By the way, if you want to know what that is, it looks kind of strange, but this is like yellow uh, kiwi. Then here is yogurt mixed with, um, uh, I don't know, half a flocken and a chia seed and a lime seed and with lime oil. And then there are nuts and uh, on top it's uh, apple, I don't know, sauce or something, what you would call it. Um, so very healthy and very delicious. So yeah, in this case, like this cosplay holds an important part in my life. And the whole series does. And I, uh, I was about to tell you that I was wearing it like twice at a convention. Once at... Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, Konichi 2016. But honestly, there are not many photos existing. And then I was wearing it at the small um, convention in Berlin, the MMC, where um, Rio Misono, the author, was there. He signed my um, mangas there and of course I was in this costume. By the way, this is not the ver this is not the first record of Lotus World costume I did. Mm -mm -mm. I think I have three more. Three more. <laughs> the very first one is a um, absolutely not known character from the manga series um, Lady of Forest. I can insert a picture. That was right when I started cosplaying in 2009. Great. That was nine, yeah. Mm. Then some years later, um, I did Nice. You can also insert a picture. For this delete version, one year earlier in 2015, I did another version of delete in a red dress that she's wearing in the ending of the OVA. Insert picture. <laughs> um. By the way, 
way, didn't you know? <laughs> Probably not. Um, there were also records of photos for um, video games. Mm. There was one for the SNES or uh, Super Famicom called in uh, Japan because it wasn't released in over in Europe or uh, in the US. It was just a um, Japan exclusive game so for the Super Nintendo. And I think just two years ago or so it was translated so you can now play it because prior to that you couldn't play it because it's an RPG, kind of a strategic RPG and you need to read. And when you can't read Japanese then it's, it's kind of impossible to play but I think <coughs> for those of you who are kind of into retro gaming you can play that. And then there was definitely a Game Boy Color game. Also, I think just in Japanese, uh, so no idea if this is translated or uh, reached the European or American market, probably not. But the only one that was released in the US and also Europe, I guess, was one for the Sega Dreamcast, which was the last console of Sega um, around like, yeah, in the end of the 90s. But um, I just watched some gameplay and it's really boring <laughs> for me. It doesn't look like Record of Love's War because this one is more like a, I don't know, battle game. Where you run around and battle orcs or whatever. <laughs> and the other, uh, definitely the Super Nintendo or Super Famicom was an RPG. A little bit like Zelda looking. But I'm absolutely not into gaming anymore, so no. By the way, you would think if I like this and um, this kind of high fantasy anime thingy or at least when I liked this, I would probably also be very much into Zelda. I never came across Zelda when I was young. I never played any of the games. Um, I didn't, uh, I don't know if there was anything else back then, but didn't watch anything, didn't read any manga, nothing, no idea about Zelda. I always think costumes like cosplayer, Zelda, uh, all the characters, not only Link and Zelda, but there are so many characters, they look gorgeous and I'm always like intrigued. I would like to know what it is about because it, it's probably similar, like the hero's journey and um, the young adventurer goes his way and there are elves and orcs and dwarves, high fantasy probably. Um, I definitely also think that Record of Lotus War, not the games, I mean like the books and then the anime in 1990, influenced like the high um, fantasy pop culture in Japan like a lot, probably the most. So why have the elves these huge years? I think before Delet, before Record of Lotus War, the, the, there were no like elves in an anime or something like with these huge years. This is like, I guess, all influenced by Record of Lotus War. It was really a staple of high fantasy and has influenced all the RPGs and everything. So. Um, it is important in anime history and in whatever, fantasy, gaming, RPG.
really like about those days that I just take my bike, cosplay or not, <laughs> and go around here. You can hear me, it's all that open. But um, what I really like about it is that no schedule, time doesn't matter. I, I'm just out here. Uh, filming or not, or <laughs> taking photos or not. If I'm not um, vlogging, of course, then I just have my ponies with me, take one or two pony photos instead. Oh, speaking of, I haven't taken pony photos. <laughs> Let's see if I can find a nice spot for um, my pony. I've actually never gone that way, so I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> not exactly sure where it leads me, but I just thought these. Uh, I was thinking about taking for, like photos here with this as a backdrop. Because what actually is this? Is it? It's an interesting tree. <laughs> Looks very interesting, but not sure. Hmm. Because I'm actually on the search for um, some like meadow flowers or something for um, where I can take um, pony photos. So. But I guess here this also looks interesting. <sighs> but I'm kind of too lazy to again unpack everything. Like, I did it again. I put a pony in a tree. Oh, it's really difficult to display the pony here because all these beautiful meadow flowers, that's what I like, that's what I wanted, but they are too high. Like, I think I have one or two photos, but then let's um, try to arrange her like above them so that I can have them just in the background probably. problem currently is that all my three batteries like um, are cool so they were full when I started and now the last one has just a tiny bit left so I don't know how much I can still accomplish maybe I just don't take any photos anymore and just take you along with me back home let's see what's so beautiful here open you could look through there wow it's grown so much wow
this is what we <laughs> or my family or whoever always used to call Froschteich. So frog um, lake. What's the smaller version of Thai, uh, of lake? Water hole, no, in between the size. Anyways, Froschteich. Ducks and here are also uh, Canada goose and some others. And the beach is quite a nice, but you shouldn't um, you shouldn't like go swimming here because this is a like nature reservoir. So only the birds should swim here. I like my shadow. <laughs> yeah, I'm still here. So sadly my real camera ran out of battery. So now I'm filming on my phone. <laughs> Um, I think I managed still to do four pictures or something. I knew that the battery, and I, I already exchanged it to the other battery. And I have, I've probably like never really filmed on my phone, just the very short uh, videos that I put on Instagram. <laughs> um, but let's 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 give it a try. Yeah. I just um, yeah, put my, um, what are they called, like my, my leg warmers and, and, and all that um, away. Oh yeah, probably better. Um, because um, she's also, Dilit is also depicted very often uh, without anything. I, I mean, without anything, without uh, shoes or without gloves, when she's just in her uh, green dress. That's why I wanted to do that here in the water. You see, uh, as I said, no swimming or anything, but I mean, you can put your feet in it, so <laughs> that should be fine. I wish I could have taken more photos. Maybe I try the last battery again. Uh, is usable or not so I won't overdo it with this so I guess that's it I'll see you at home hi I'm back home and with a look at my uh, oh, clock <laughs> I see that I was uh, out uh, on the bike tour for a very long time. It's now almost 7 p.m. and I started 11 a.m. in the morning like that's even longer than the Hobbit bike tour took and actually this is uh, this was not such a big tour but anyways I had a lot of fun I think uh, I got some nice pictures it was very relaxing picnicking 
Um, and yeah, going by bike around that beautiful nature. I hope you also had a little bit of fun, learned a little bit about Record of Lotus War and why it's actually in a very important cosplay and a very important series to me. Although it's not that, um, let's say, important at the moment for me. <laughs> um, but from a nostalgic point of view and what it meant to, to me, um, is it is that huge. So, deal it, record of Lotus War bike tour. See you real soon. May the force be with you. Bye. Oh, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below.